thank you so much for taking your time to um, make this interview. And um, as I stated in my mail, um, I will just ask about um, how you really got into the, um, the flatter phenomenon uh, to begin with and how YouTube might have uh, helped um, grow the, uh, the phenomenon online. So um, I guess my first question to you would be, how did you really become a flat earther in the first place? Well, when I first heard about it, like anyone else, I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. And I refused to look at anything, just like uh, most people. And then after a while, people just kept coming at me with it. And uh, somebody I trusted very much said, hey, you got to look into this. So I went into it with a closed mind saying, I'm just going to debunk it and prove the globe and be done with this. Because we all know there's thousands of proofs of the globe and there's no proof of flat earth. Um, but when you actually take an honest look and start to look, you see that the opposite is true. There's tons of proof of flat earth and there's zero proof of the globe. The only proof the globe has is the word science and the word physics but they have no science or physics that support the globe. So right. after, after digging into it, um, trying to disprove it, I realized, wow, there's so many different things. And one of the things I noticed was we can see too far. I kept seeing all these videos and I said, all right, I got to verify this myself. So I spent about a thousand dollars on a, on a super zoom camera and a tripod and I went down to the beach and using the globe math for curvature, I was able to see things that should be hundreds of feet below below the curvature. And there they are, not a mirage. Um, I could see them and I could see the water surface for miles and miles beyond it. So there's no curvature, no curvature, no ball. I see. Um, so um, how did your friends or family uh, react uh, when you started to um, believe um, the opposite of what we are taught in schools? Yeah, I mean, as well, they have all different reactions. There's certain people that just, you know, like I was, refused to look at it. And then anybody that um, takes the time to actually look and rather than Googling, hey, you know, is, is the earth flat, you know, um, or, you know, pictures of flat earth. And when they, when they do that, they get pictures like this, you know, no flat earther thinks that this is the flat earth. Right. So, yeah. you know, but that's to gatekeep your mind. And then you say, okay, wait, well, let me look into the heliocentric model that I'm, that I'm defending. Cause you know, I don't even know what the heliocentric model is. Do you know how fast the earth is spinning in the heliocentric model? Oh uh, yeah, it's um, if you look at it uh, in miles per hour, it's about about a thousand. Very good. Um, so you, you've looked into yeah. it, and and it's orbiting at sixty six thousand miles an hour. It's chasing the sun at over half a million miles an hour, and the entire thing's moving sideways at uh, like one or two million miles per hour. But you know we have things like the like the Georgia Guidestones and other pyramids where you look through a hole and the North Star is right there and it never moves and all the other stars circle around it. That's impossible on a spinning corkscrewing earth that's moving trillions of miles every decade. Okay, I see. Um, but um, can you, can you uh, might tell me why, why is it important um, for you in particular to, to convince other people? Why is it your um, task to inform people? Yeah, it's well, you know, everybody's on their own journey. And we've been lied to for the purpose of controlling our minds. This world is under attack right now by the, the people that are running it. Uh, and they've got you convinced that you're on a speck flying through an infinite universe in an, in an impossible, physically impossible vacuum. You can't have a gas, you know, suns and stars are gas balls in a vacuum. Go ahead, go into the lab and try to figure that one out. And, uh, you know, that we're, we're orbiting and, you know, everything is a perfect, what works perfectly and resets like if you go out and look at the stars tonight they're next year same night same time the stars will be in the exact same position every year they reset every year eclipses reset every 18 years how is that possible in a beehive corkscrewing you know heliocentric 
um, insane universe, and it isn't. So why is it important? Because if you're lost in space, spinning out of control, don't know who you are, where you are, what you are, you think that you know you came from pond scum that evolved into a monkey that turned into a human, and that an asteroid could take you out at any moment, and global warming, and food shortages, and and running out of dinosaur juice, ridiculous for our cars, you know it, that's living in a in a life of fear. And when you're in fear, you uh, you literally disconnect from your ability to manifest with your mind. They don't want you to know that there's more. You know, what, what is the flat earth? It's not a disc in space, which most people that, you know, that fight the flat earth think the, the flat earth is more like a pond and that pond, you know, it has islands and they're surrounded by water and the water is surrounded by the highest land on earth, Antarctica. Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom of a ball. It's the shoreline around the world pond. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat, scientifically, testably, provably flat over any amount of distance. Okay, um, so yeah, okay, I get what you're saying. Okay, um, so you you are you have been making videos for YouTube and for a while, I believe, right? I've been on doing about 25 interviews a week because everybody is waking up. The world is waking up. There's millions and millions and millions of us and it's growing faster and faster. Yeah, yeah, um, I heard that. Um, so for how long have you um, uh, been doing YouTube videos? Um, six years, maybe a little six longer. Years. Yeah, maybe longer. maybe longer. I mean, I've been doing flat earth videos for six years. Yeah. Um, and do you believe uh, that YouTube as a platform um, has allowed you to reach out to people? I think that YouTube got, you know, YouTube isn't a place, you know, people say, where do you get your information from YouTube? Well, that's like saying, where do you get your information from the world? YouTube is just a platform to upload videos. There's garbage on there. There's nonsense on there. There's truth on there. Everything's on there. You can't name anything, you know, that that's not pornographic that you can't find on YouTube. I mean, and even some pornographic things you can find. Everything's on YouTube. So it's just a platform. So at the beginning, uh, when you go would Google, when you'd search YouTube for Flat Earth, bam, up would come all of the amazing videos that people were making, asking questions. The whole thing started off with Mark Sargent's clues, where he's like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. And he put out some questions like, hey, how is this possible on a globe? And he expected some PhDs, some scientists to come back and say, this is how it's possible. None of them ever did. Nobody could ever answer these questions. So. Um, so YouTube at the beginning would start recommending like, Hey, you know, this guy, P brain, this guy, Eric Bay uploaded a video and you start watching and you're like, wow. And you learn more and more. But then just a few years ago, they had congressional hearings about fake news and they used flat earth as their example of what they're going to censor. So now if you go on Google on YouTube and you search flat earth up comes, um, all nonsensical, ridiculous videos done by proven government shills right people that are paid there's a you know there's a group of these guys that just 24 7 just make videos trying to debunk flat earth and it's all straw man arguments and all all um gaslighting but we've proven that they all work for the same person they have the same people making their thumbnails they have the same people doing everything it's all it's very well organized. And why would they spend all this time um, you know, and effort and why all the space agencies, why would they do this? Um, and it's all about control because if I put a fence around your yard and said, you can't leave there, you'd freak out, right? You, you, you wouldn't put up for that. Probably, yeah. If I put a fence around your state and said, you can't leave your state, you'd freak out. If I put a fence around your country, you'd freak out. I don't care how big that fence is. Any human that sees a fence wants to go to the other side of that fence. So they couldn't put a fence around us. Um, they put they put us our minds in a prison, and that prison is the globe because we're told that you know, hey, you there's nothing else to nothing else to see. You know, we've we've ex we've we've explored the whole globe, and Antarctica is too cold. You know, um, to go there, but there's nothing there. Well, that's not the truth. I mean, Antarctica could very well be bigger than all of the continents and all of the oceans combined and what's out there. Maybe there's extra territory. This is where we live. Maybe there beyond Antarctica, there's extra terra. Okay. Extra yeah, yeah. 
extraterrestrials would come from extra Terra, right? And, uh, and where would they be coming from? They'd be coming from the outer space beyond Antarctica across the Earth plane. That's a possibility, but because Antarctica uh, has a treaty until the year 2041, um, nobody can independently go there and explore. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of mystery surrounding Antarctica uh, in general, so yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you, actually, you actually mentioned it um, right before. Um, you said that um, you experienced um, from some, some sort of censorship on, uh, on videos when you Oh, were, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're shadow banned. There's one of the greatest intro videos to Flat Earth is called The Exact Name is A Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth 21 Questions by ODD TV. That's the name of the channel. If you search that exact name and channel name, that should be the top hit, but it's not. You get all the garbage propaganda nonsense. Like if you search Google for or YouTube for uh, top 10 reasons the earth is flat, you're going to get top 10 reasons the earth is a globe. You're going to end up at the Flatter Society. You're going to end up with, uh, you know, Psyop Man Dan. You're going to end up with all of their shill videos um, going up. If I, if you said, hey, Dave, how does circumnavigation work on a flat earth? And I sent you a video, it, you get my video, but then the next video that would pop up in your feed, they would start in, in, in they would start inundating you with nonsense um, videos. You know, just recently, just recently, there was this, um, someone took this picture of, of this ship floating in the air, <clears throat> right? Does that look like a ship's floating in the air? So all the mainstream media is just putting out article after article, how, you know, the refraction and the curvature of the earth and, you know, that ship is not floating in the air. That ship is sitting on the water. The horizon is right behind the behind it. And the water is just calm there. There's a wind line and there's mirrored water mirroring the nondescript sky. And the, the ship is just sitting there. There's rough water and then smooth water, and then the ship, and then more water, and then the horizon, okay? But if you look at all the science magazines, they're talking about inferior mirages and, the, and just all of this scientific mumbo jumbo. So people think you flat earthers are science deniers. No, we're the ones that actually use science. You know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the high priest of scientism, he's their head spokesman to, you know, to fake the globe. Um, he says, Ready? The science has been settled. We don't need to talk to flat earthers. Does that sound like science to you? I mean, science is all about exploring. Um, right. So, yeah. Right. So, um, so go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. Uh, go ahead. I was going to just say one of the biggest arguments is, you know, when you're up in an airplane, you can see the curvature, you know, even from any height, you know, drones can see curvature. Well, the way our the way our site works is we can see a certain distance. And then that's where the point of convergence is where the sky meets the water. And whether that's 10 miles or 300 miles, I don't care. Um, we can see if I'm looking this way, I can see a certain distance. If I'm looking this way, I can see the same distance. If I'm looking this way, I can see the same distance. So the way that works is if I'm standing right here, I can see the same distance in all directions. Well, this edge is the limit of my vision, right? That's where convergence happens. You flip that down, this is how I'm seeing, right? And if I put a line on it, globers will say, look, there's curvature. That's the curve of the earth. Well, that's no, this line is farther than I can see. This is as far as I can see. We see in a circle and then our brains are programming and their nonsense tells us it's a sphere. It's ridiculous. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, actually, you, you mentioned something before I've, I found really interesting uh, because I actually also wrote to uh, Eric Dubay yeah. about an interview um, he had in uh, time, unfortunately. Uh, but he, he also yeah, mentioned... Go ahead. Uh, he also mentioned um, Flutter Society uh, as a nonsense. Um, I thought they, they were... were well, the, the good guys. So, so no, no. So Flutter speak. Society is a government-run disinformation site. They're pushed to the top of all Google searches. They oh. made the talk show circuit in the '60s, '70s, and '80s, um, where the the founder came on and basically it was a comedy routine about you know he fell off the earth and he grabbed onto a rock. Nobody believes you can fall off the edge of a flat earth. You know that's like saying I could fall off the edge of a lake. No, when you get to the edge of the lake. What happens? 
you you grab you you step up onto the land. Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. It's the container that holds in the world's oceans. What's beyond Antarctica? What's out there? What's out there? Uh, we don't know because we're not allowed to go there. That's true. But that that is that is really interesting. I think there is <clears throat> a flat Earth propaganda run by um, external sources. Yeah, I mean, um, all I mean, if you look at all space agencies, are part of that propaganda. The only reason for the space agencies is to make you believe that we live on a globe. The International Space Station, we catch them all the time, faking stuff. They're hanging from wires. They're using augmented reality. Look, she's talking to kids. You see anything right here? No. Then all of a sudden, there's this stuffed animal, and now she's manipulating it. That's not there. It's augmented reality. Okay. They do this yep. all the time. And then th there's other times where, where um, there <clears throat> two guys are talking to you. They're hanging from wires. It's clear they're hanging from wires. But in the background, way down the space station, somebody will go floating by. And then we zoom in on it and we can see the harness and the wires that they're hanging from. Look, he's hanging from a harness. Why would they fake gravity or anti-gravity on the space station? And the thing that they're flipping around isn't there. And uh, what happens is he's this guy over here, uh, if you we hang a second, um, he's flipping his hat around. And at one point in the script, he's supposed to pass it to the guy in the green, but he moves his hand and the guy thinks he's passing him the hat and he screws up and he grabs nothing and puts it away. So, so there's the hat, it's not really there. And they're looking either through contact lenses that have uh, screens on them, or they're looking at a, a monitor behind the camera. Watch, he's going to move his right hand. Here it goes. He's going to move his hand. He thinks that's passing the hat. He grabs it and puts it away. Okay. I'm looping it right there. So again, there, there's so much nonsense that's going on on the space station. Um, I call it the international fake station. You know, Here's Don Pettit. He's drinking coffee, right? Out of a bag, showing how it sticks to the bag. And he, he just finishes and he, he lets it go. This is a CGI cup. And the coffee is also CGI. And watch, the coffee gets out of sync with the cup, right? Something goes wrong and it gets out of sync just for a second. And they quickly take this video down off their website, but we've already downloaded it. That can't happen in reality. This is all augmented reality. So you know the the international space the 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 space shuttle, right? The space shuttle. Yeah, Remember yeah, the space yeah. shuttle, and it has that giant tank on it, the external tank, the fuel tank. Well, that thing yeah. empty weighs forty thousand pounds of steel. Does this look like forty thousand pounds of steel falling out of the sky, or does that look like a blimp filled with I mean, helium? The first, at first glance, um, it it doesn't look like no no. Yeah, so it so watch right about here. A piece of paper is going to flow flow by. This is a balloon floating in the air, and then a piece of paper. They, there it goes. You see it? That thing should be falling at over a thousand miles an hour. Supposedly, before it gets to these clouds, it's going to burn up and dissolve. Okay, what you're looking at here is a balloon, and it's not above the clouds. It's below the clouds, right? What do you mean it's below the clouds, Dave? I'm looking up, right? So here's a shot from the space station looking down at the earth, right? The question is, where's the, where, where is the land? And your answer should be, well, it's probably over the ocean, right? Actually, this is done with zero budget from our front yard. We just turned the camera upside down, okay? That's how easy it is to fool people with their nonsense from the space station. All of it is to put your mind in a prison. Do you remember Elon Musk sent his car into space? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, did you ever watch it? Uh, not, not live though, no. No, did you ever watch the, re the, the video of it? I mean, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is what they showed us. This isn't even up as high as the space station when they supposedly took this. Space station can't see the curvature of the earth, but this one can. And look at this shot right here, ready? Take a snapshot right now, click. Shouldn't that be a poster in every Tesla showroom? 
It's not photographed anywhere. It's not on a postcard. It's not on a postage stamp. It's not on a magazine cover. It's not in a magazine. It's not in the Tesla brochure. It's nowhere. It's never been used because it's nonsense. Elon Musk even said in the press conference, quote, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. We'd have better CGI. That's what he said. Okay. Anybody that honestly looks at flat earth, anybody that honestly looks at it, will see it. But most people are so indoctrinated because before you can talk, you are indoctrinated with with uh, globes, right? With, with, you know, when you watch Sesame Street, it's all, they have astronauts on Sesame Street. The Yip Yaps are talking about the moon and the Mars and the earth and all of this stuff. And then you go to school, there's a globe in the front of the class and the teacher teaches you about dinosaurs and asteroids wiping you out, which instills a level of fear because an asteroid could wipe you out. Every other day, NASA is doing a report about a near, near missed asteroid, okay? It's all nonsense, right? All photos of Earth are done in Photoshop and painted, okay? This is one that I'm not gonna take the time to go through it, but we created a better looking Earth than, than what NASA shows us. And people go, what about the photos from space? These are two photos from space. Use your academic mind here. This one was on everyone's iPhone to indoctrinate them. And then this one came out a few years later. Look at the United States, it's twice the size. And if I tilt my hand back like the second photo, it should get smaller, not bigger, right? But some people say, well, the focal length, this and that. Well, here's something, we can never verify anything NASA does, but we can verify some things. This is a photo of Earth. We can measure, we can drive across Mexico, we can take a boat across the bay here, we can drive across Baja, and we can scientifically prove that that distance is 934 miles, right? Well, this is this block represents 934 miles, 7,917 is the diameter of the Earth, I should be able to fit eight and a half of those segments in between those two lines. That proves to you NASA's lying full of crap. This is a painting to put your mind in a prison. Okay. I'm offering, you know what a Bitcoin is? I'm sure you follow crypto, right? Yeah, You're it's uh, around like 360,000 Danish crowns. Yeah, it's so it's like 50,000, almost $60,000 here in the United States. I'm yeah, offering a Bitcoin insane. for one proof of the globe. Yeah, you wrote that, yeah. One proof of the globe. So here, here's the thing, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in school, right? Your university, yeah. Yeah. All of, all of the history they're teaching you is lies, all of it. All of the science, the ask, there is science, you know, computer science, that's science, biology, that's science, right? Med, you know, medicine, uh, don't ask me about medicine, but like a trauma doctor, that those are the doctors, the, the um, allopathic doctors pushing pharmaceutical nonsense. That's not, that's witchcraft. I mean, that is, that is horrifying, but you're being taught, you're being indoctrinated. And the people that become the professors, that become the teachers, that become the scientists are the ones that can memorize and regurgitate the nonsense the best, right? Check this out. Here's a flight from Taiwan to Los Angeles, and here's Hawaii. Right about here, there was an emergency, a medical emergency, and they needed to land the plane. If you're the pilot, where would you land? Probably Hawaii. Probably, but what if Hawaii, you know, they're too busy. They don't have an airport. Maybe you'd probably go here, okay? Would you yeah, go yeah. all the way up to Alaska, thousands of miles out of the way? Of course not, but they went to Alaska. That's where they landed. Well, here's the flat earth map. Taiwan, emergency, Alaska. Hawaii is all the way out here, okay? This is the real flight route that they take and they lie to you and we catch them again and again and again and again. There's a book called uh, 16 Emergency Landings um, and every time they land, it only makes sense on a flat earth and all 16 examples. It only makes sense on a flat earth. They go thousands of miles out of their projected flight path to land in a place that only makes sense on a flat earth, you, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, this actually brings me to the, to my next question because you also Shoot. talked about him uh, a bit before. Um, um, those YouTube channels who um, who um, basically um, only um, debunk your channels like Simon and Dan, does those yeah. um, 
challenges affect you in any way, like positive or negatively? No, but actually, they actually help us. Well, they, they help anyone that's honestly looking into flat earth, then they see them. And they're like, Oh, my God, this is ridiculous. And it really even helps them go further. The problem is, there's lots of weak minded people um, that get caught up Simon Dan, and, uh, you know, these other, you know, fight the fat earth guy. Um, they they're only there to grab capture the weak minded people, they know that they're not going to get us right and there's lots of weak minded people that just fall into that because it's easier to believe belief is the enemy of knowing. So, you know, Simon Dan, uh, I get so many messages from people that are like yeah I saw you on Simon Dan I went out to check your channel and I'm like, wow, all of his arguments are are you know gaslighting and and uh, straw man arguments he never. You know, he just makes faces and he does these cute videos and they're all scripted. Simon Dan will not talk to us live. He said, I'll do a, an interview with you, but I'll give you a series of questions and you can answer them and then he'll edit it and do one of his snarky videos. It's ridiculous. It's so pathetic. And, um, you know, the guy, the guy isn't really worth my time talking about. So, you know, and his channel's filled with bots, you know, and all of these guys, they come out of nowhere, they get huge YouTube channels, you know, sub numbers, and then they're, they're pushed right to the top of the list. That's all done on purpose. Yeah, so I, I mean, his channel is the only reason I, I know about your, your channel and about all the, all the others. Um, there you go. Thank you, Simon Dan. You're going you're gonna to be a flat earther, my friend, if you look into this with an open mind. You, the problem is most people can't handle ridicule. You ever see the experiment? where they have people sitting in a room, like the, the, the woman in the waiting room, and she's the only one that's the real person. Everyone else is an actor. And every time a bell goes off, everybody stands up for a second and then sits down. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, and after, yeah. after a while, she starts doing it, right? Right, because of the peer pressure. People don't like to um, go against the wave. You know, There's all sorts of stuff happening in this world where people just do it because everyone else is doing it. Well, people don't like, um, being the outcast. Well, I don't really care what exactly. people think about me. So the thing is, six years ago, um, you say flat earther, that's synonymous with moron, idiot, you know, uneducated loser living in the mother's basement. Uh, now you mentioned flat earth, people are like, that's interesting. I heard something about that. Can I talk to you? Right now, like we send out uh, information, you know, like, hey, we reach out to you know, small podcast, big podcast, and they're like, yeah, we'll have you on. Yep, we'll have you on, we wanna to talk to you. And then the ones that think that it's the dumbest thing ever, but are willing to listen and have a discussion by the end of one podcast, they're like, holy crap, the earth is flat. Really? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, did I tell you where I live? Uh, no, no. Well, what, what country am I in? United States. All um, right, do you know that for a fact? Um, I guess. How do you know it? I believe it. I think um, you have mentioned it. I've mentioned it I a think, whole bunch of times. NASA think, has mentioned yeah. they went to the moon a whole bunch of times. Okay. What I'm saying is belief. You believe I live in America. Okay. Yeah. I could be in friggin' Russia. You don't know until you verify it. Yes, I do live in, in, in America. Right. Because if you don't go through your life, not at least believing some things you, your life is going to only be filled with verifying you're never going to get out of your kitchen you know you're never going to get out of your house because you're going to try to verify every single thing you have to believe but there's deceivers in this world deceiving us every day um and if you look at nasa like you know they say the sun is 93 million miles away that's ridiculous you can see the sun it's right here within our sky you know there's a day moon out um right now uh, so go check out the moon in the day sky and you can see that the blue sky is behind the moon. It's within our earth system. You know, and the distances they tell us things are here. Here's something. They boggle your mind with numbers and never teach you what numbers are. How long is one trillion seconds? Take a guess. Uh, one trillion seconds. It's a really large number. Um, it's like, just take a guess. How, how long is it? If you guess it within a year, I'll give you a Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to say like a, a billion years. A billion years? <laughs> That's a fucking long time, dude. It's 31,000 yeah. years. Okay. Oh, okay. One trillion seconds is 31,000 
years. Your brain can't even process what that means, okay? So I, I wanted to show you what a trillion is. So the closest star to us is 25 trillion miles away, the closest one, right? So in the heliocentric model, the, the sun is one of those big yoga balls and the earth is a small marble next to it, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you were out in the middle of the ocean and I brought the sun a mile over your head, it would fill the entire sky horizon to horizon, right? Because you would be, you know, here would be the sun and you'd be right here and you'd look up and all you see is the sun, right? Okay. Exactly, yeah. So then we move it to where they say it is 93 million miles away. And it's now the size of a coin held at arm's length, right? So it reduced from the entire sky to the size of a dime, the size of a nickel or whatever. If I doubled the distance, how much smaller would it get? A lot smaller, okay? And we could do some math to, to prove that its angular size would be probably too small to see, but let's just be safe. If I pushed it eight times the distance, eight times, its angular size would be impossible to see. It would be so small, your eye can't resolve it, okay? So we're gonna call that eight times the distance. We're gonna call that the, the sun is too far to see distance, okay? Yeah. With me? Mm -hmm. The closest star is 40, thousand times farther than that that's the closest one and the rest are magnitudes farther how the heck can we see all of the stars with our eyes when scientifically provable provably that the angular resolution limits of our eyes couldn't see them and then also if you in, if you put the inverse square law of light on how light has to be brighter at farther distances to see it you couldn't, the brightness doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense when you actually look at it, right? We see this over water, but if you get a light and get a piece of metal or plastic and, and make the glare, you know, look so you can see the glare, bend it just the tiniest bit, bend it, and bam, that turns into a point light. But this is what we see over bodies of water, okay? I can go on and on and on. Yeah, I can there, see you, you can, yeah, really can prepare. But, well, the, the thing is, because it's really easy. I mean, you know, we can prove NASA does all their training in a pool with green screens, and this is what they show us, okay? We catch bubbles, you know, when they're doing their stupid spacewalks, we catch bubbles in space, you know? Those little bubbles, bubbles go up? like Well, they go up, but, but sometimes they're filming sideways, and so the bubble goes sideways. And but, sometimes the bubble will take a turn because a scuba diver kicked his fin and, the, and pushed the bubble around, right? But I saw uh, a video you, you, I, from, um, it was from Simon Dan, but he used one of your videos inside and you showed a clip where um, um, so-called bubbles in space, um, you can see them fly different directions um, simultaneously basically so both, both up and down to the, to the side. Yeah, because and there's there's currents, there's people kicking. These are small bubbles. And we, there, there's videos where we're filming bubbles underwater and then somebody kicks and the bubble goes down, you know, it moves because of just, you know, there's lots of currents going on with all of these cameramen and, 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 and you know, scuba divers kicking around. So again, sometimes they're filming sideways and upside down. You know, they use all different techniques. Sometimes they're underwater. Sometimes they're on a zero G plane, right? You know what a zero G plane is, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, one time I was watching, uh, they, were, they were talking about, this was a long time ago. It was like early shuttle days or maybe even space station days, I forget. But um, they said, we're going to have a, a, a rare interview live from the space station, okay? Or from the space shuttle. And um, they only, but they only had, for like 45 seconds of satellite time. Well, 45 seconds is about what the space station does. So this is on, this is both in a zero G plane. This one just looks like the space station, okay? Right, whether they're using green screens or they outfitted it to look like that. So this is, <clears throat> so during the interview, about 20 seconds in, all of a sudden everybody slammed into the wall and they cut away. And something happened, the parabolic arc, they must have hit an air pocket or something and they, uh, that parabolic arc ended. So I took that video, I turned it sideways and I compared it to the end of a zero G arc. This is the end of a zero G arc. And this is what happened live on the news. 
and you put them side by side, it's obviously the same thing. And this astronaut that suppose he catches the objects with one hand, two objects with one hand, like he's done this a thousand times. Everyone's flipping things around, mesmerizing the audience. This is a zero G plane. They're, they're, they're lying about everything. And the fact that we catch NASA, you know, hanging from wires and getting tangled in their wires, um, all you gotta do is catch them once and you can unwind it to, you know, we never went to the moon. It's nonsense. Okay, um, just to get um, back to YouTube for a brief moment. Um, yes. I was just wondering if YouTube, um, at least for you, um, is the most important or best press platform to uh, recruit people. Um, you, YouTube is the absolute worst platform. They are, they are the book burners of the 20th century, 21st century, whatever century we're in. Um, they are hiding everything that's useful. Uh, but the problem is they've got the majority of the world, the majority of the sleeping people in this world only know of YouTube. They've never heard of BitChute or Odyssey or any of these alternative platforms. So, you know, if you go they're they're trying to corral us to go to these other platforms and we'll be preaching to the choir. So the reason I stay on YouTube is because I could find more people on YouTube. Uh, but the problem is, you know, you search, some people start search my YouTube na channel, D-I-T-R-H, and they, they, they can't even find it. Well, it's a pretty unique name and um, it won't come up, but, you know, you have to literally look for it and search for it. Sometimes it comes up. It depends on what, you know, their algorithms are like, hey, this guy's already looked into it. This guy already is a flat earther. We'll let him find this stuff. But somebody that's never searched and looked for flat earth, then they won't find my channel. So um I use YouTube as a as a platform to distribute videos, but uh, I'm prepared for when they shut that down, which is coming probably pretty soon. And uh, I do different things. So here's the thing: if you if you search flat Earth, you are going to um, just get nonsense. Okay, you're gonna get you're gonna get just complete garbage. And um, as I said before, um, you know. It's all it's all about gatekeeping everyone's minds with, um, you know, with with just pseudoscience. So what I did is I created an app. Have you seen my app? Yeah, yes, yeah, I, I've seen your app. Yeah. Yeah. So so the app the app itself um, helps people see what's going on every day. There's a new video. Um, called the featured video of the day. And this is the challenge I give people. Watch the featured video of the day every day for two weeks. And then uh, if you have any proof of uh, the globe, you can send it to me and I'll give you a Bitcoin. But before you do it, you have to hit the question mark and up come all the questions you're going to ask. Like these are all of the things that have been programmed into our heads. And like, you know, I was talking about ships over the horizon. If I hit ships over the horizon, up comes a playlist that YouTube will not serve you, that teaches you why you think you see ships go over the horizon, okay? But this is stuff that YouTube will not serve you. And um, again, you know what, uh, bottom right, it's where it says mud floods, Tataria, you should look into that if you wanna know about our true history. So it's, a, it's, it's an amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing world we live in. And, you know, people don't like change. You know, people don't like, they just like, they build their world around them and they don't like the rug being ripped out from underneath them. I'm ripping out the entire foundation of your world belief by showing you this information. And most people, lots of people can't handle that amount of shakeup in their lives. They're they're, they're too indoctrinated. They're just too set in their ways. And they're like, I can't believe I was lied to my whole life. Their egos are too big or whatever. But once you do, once you realize it, I'm actually not ripping out the foundation of your world. I'm actually showing you that the world, I'm actually putting a foundation, a solid foundation under your feet. I'm putting you back into your power where nobody has dominion over you, where you are the, you are the ruler of your own life and you only have to obey you know, universal law or God's law, which is don't, don't break anyone else's free will. Don't kill them. Don't murder, you know, don't steal from them and help your neighbor. That's it. Maintain control of your soul and realize that nobody has power over you. So we're trying to 
break free of the mind matrix. And uh, it's a great journey. So why did I quit my high paying own company that I started? I had a company. Uh, I was making more money than I ever thought I would make. Life is great. And uh, I kind of got the calling to walk away and, and talk, talk to people about this because right now the world is in tyranny. And if we ever get our freedom back, the question is how long can we keep it if we don't know where we are, who we are, what we are, or the power of our own minds? Because there will be people here no matter what happens next, that know the truth of this world, and they can use that power over us. If you're spinning out of control in space, you're powerless. Okay, but um, what what exactly are you benefiting from, from all this? Um, so what I'm benefiting is I'm trying to wake people up to this reality. Um, because I want my freedom back. I want my kids to have a world where they have freedom, they can travel, they can explore, they can realize who they are, where they are, what they are. So how do I profit from this? Well, you know, we live in yeah. this world where you need money. You need money. You know, money is just a belief system. It's total nonsense. And we're trying to break away from that. But um, I'm able with the selling of my app, at $2.99, you know, the cost of a, you know, a Snapple or whatever, um, and that you have the app for the rest of your life versus, you know, peeing it away 20 minutes later. Um, the, the app was able to pay my bills. And when I realized that, I said, you know what, I'll walk away from high six figure salary to just enough money to get by. Um, because this message is important. Freedom is important. And, uh, the world is in, in a, a really bad place right now. And if people don't wake up, we're, we're, gonna, we're in for some serious darkness ahead. So I'm hoping that the world will wake up and, uh, you know, in time to uh, take back our freedom. And uh, this is one of the things that will do it. Uh, but which kind of freedom? Because um, I don't think I quite um, understand what you exactly mean. Because is there anything... Or you want to do now you, that you simply can't do to the um i can't fly situation. anywhere without somebody shoving something up into my brain or or soon they're going to be you can't go anywhere without getting a, a, a mrna vaccination um if you know anything about what's going on with these vaccinations these aren't even vaccinations they're not approved by the fda they're under emergency authorization they're experimental rna they'll change your dna and i think it's going to kill a lot of people next year the people with the vaccine are going to get the coronavirus, then your body is going to, every cell has the vaccine in it. And it's going to, it has changed the instructions of what your body will do. And uh, it will create the wrong proteins and you'll start attacking yourself. And then they'll blame it on a new variant and there'll be a massive die off. This happens every hundred years. It happened in 1920 with the Spanish flu. Everybody was wearing masks. Everybody was getting vaccinated. It was a massive die off bigger than what they told us. Right. Fauci himself said uh, that most of the people in the 1920s died from bacterial pneumonia from wearing those infested face diapers, breathing their own toxins in and not getting fresh air, lowering their oxygen in their body, getting cancer um, and turning your body acidic. You know, that's what they're doing to us. If they wanted us to be healthy, they'd say, go out, get some sun, go to the beach, relax, you know, get some vitamin D. But they have us doing the complete opposite. And they just have us watching the news, living in fear, doing everything wrong, putting us in financial fear, putting us in fear of death. Though the world is screwed up. And if people don't wake up soon, um, we're in for some darkness. You, you're in for a rough life, my friend. So, but, um, so how, so how would, okay, let's just, let's just say that um, the earth is flat. How would that information give us um, the Good question. you were talking about. Yeah, so so the people that wake up to flat earth literally unplug from the matrix as for an analogy, right? Are there, so they're no longer giving their fear energy. They're no longer complying. If everybody uh, knew the earth was flat tomorrow, the whole world would unite and go, you know what? This whole control system is nonsense. And, and uh, if everyone just didn't comply, right? The reason you comply with mandates is because you believe that somebody has authority over you. If everyone said, ah, forget it, I'm gonna open my business, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And the, the, the elite would have zero power. We are the many, they are the nothing. 
okay? They aren't even the few, they are nothing, right? But people are, they've divided us. They divided us by countries and by states and by religions and by political parties and by sports teams. They're divide, 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 divide. Now they've separated us. Now they have us in fear of each other. People are wearing a diaper over their face, stopping their, their breathing in of spirit and when they get within six feet of a healthy person, they think they're going to die. Okay. That is incredible. And the only way they've been able to pull this off is people are so lost. They think they live on a spinning speck flying through an infinite space vacuum. Okay. It's ridiculous. Okay, so, 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 so my point is when you meet a flat earther, they're awake and aware to all of this, they've stopped complying. Right. So this is the thing that wakes people up. This is the thing. When you realize your whole life is a lie, you're a more powerful being than they want you to believe. And you have incredible manifestation abilities um, in this realm. And there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, you're not afraid of asteroids, nuclear bombs, nonsense, right? Global warming, nonsense. Running out of fuel, nonsense. Food, food is the most abundant thing ever. And it's everywhere. Right? You could take a seed that your grandfather put in a jar you know, 50 years ago in your garage, you could stick it in the dirt, and then the most valuable substance on earth will fall out of the sky, water, and food will grow, okay? There's no food shortage. There's a stupidity, um, you know, an abundance of stupidity and people that don't know how this world works. Okay, so as far as I understand from what you're saying is that flat earth is like a... Once you understand that, it's, it's like a gateway to understand the whole world and what's sure. going on inside it. Yeah, okay. Um, if okay, have so, you, okay, if you, so, you break away from the prison of your mind, right? You realize that there's more and that you are a powerful being here in this realm uh, and that nobody can tell you what to do, right? Once you realize that, um, things work out. There is no shortages. Money is an illusion. Right. But they control us with money and they have us worshiping, you know, money with all these crazy symbology on it. You know, there, there's a this is more of a spiritual war. and People don't even believe that's a thing, but it's a war for our energy, you know. Yeah, OK, yeah. Um, um, I would um, just wondering, uh, like, how are you? Um, I believe you have built a, a pretty substantial um, community around uh, this whole um, flat earth phenomenon. Um, how do you guys uh, communicate with each other? Is it like um, face to face or is it online? And well, most most you... things are online right now. But now we're recording this uh, towards the end of March. Uh, tomorrow, I'm leaving for South Carolina to go to a flat earth uh, festival. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds of people there, all flat earthers. And we're going to, it's a more of a music festival with some presentations and some, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some demonstrations of stuff. And we're going to just hang out and have a good time with like-minded people. And it's an amazing physical, energetic experience. You know, the, you know, about your heart energy field, it goes out six feet. I believe it goes out much farther than that, but they don't want us coming within six feet of people. They don't want us touching. We're electrical beings. We're all about sharing our biome and touching and energetic. You know, it's, it's, it's important for somebody. That's why solitary confinement is considered torture, right? They're literally torturing us. There's people that haven't left their houses in a year, okay? This is nonsense. We're going, no one's gonna be wearing masks. We're gonna, we're gonna be together. We're gonna have a great time and uh, it's gonna lift our energy and we're gonna wake up more and more people. And, uh, you know, we're doing our best to try to wake up the world. There's certain people that, you know, don't want to wake up and there's certain deceivers like Simon Dan that they're, you know, they've basically lost control of their soul and are working for pure evil. Yeah, that's one thing to put it, yeah. Um, I, that was actually all that I had um, to ask. Is there anything you, you would like to add? Uh, yeah, can you give me your number one reason that you think the earth might be a globe? My number one reason? <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, uh, I mean, gravity is probably the uh, the most uh, solid. Um, yeah. So, so let me let me just explain what gravity is, 
and it's very easy, scientifically provable. So we live in this electrical system. The, the moon is the anode, the sun is the cathode, and the water, the salt water carries the current and the land is the salt bridge, it's a battery. And the earth has a negative charge to it, scientifically testably provable negative charge, period. There is a negative charge to the earth. It's a weak negative charge, but it's there, it's everywhere across the plane. When you leave the surface of the earth, you have a positive charge. Okay, the firmament above us has the, po has the positive charge. And there's voltage in the air, testable, you know, provable. Uh, Tesla, you had free energy and they pulled, you know, energy right out of the ether. But when you're in the air, you have a negative, a positive charge to you. And that negative charge attracts it. It's just a weak downward force. Down is down for me. Down is down for someone in Australia. Down is not up. Down is down. Up is up. Left and right, forward and backwards are relative to whatever direction you're facing. But down is down, up is up. So everything knows where down is. It's a weak force, just like they say gravity is a weak force. Gravity is a theory, according to mainstream science. They don't know how it works and they have to make up dark matter and dark energy to fill in 90 plus percent of it because it doesn't work without it. So if I had a handful of ping pong balls and marbles and I dropped them over a swimming pool, they'd fall through the air because of that downward attraction and they're more dense than the air. And then the ping pong balls would sit on top of the water and the marbles would go to the bottom of the water because of buoyancy and density. That's it. But, okay. But what, what determines uh, which direction it goes? Because, because if, the earth, if, if the ball so, is denser than air, the air, yeah. the air, it would fall, but which direction? Because yeah, yeah. The, so because yeah. the earth doesn't move, the earth has a negative charge to it. Okay. The earth has a negative charge, which attracts things to it so it attracts things down the earth negative charge will attract things so here's a tinfoil triangle we put a negative charge in it and it goes up because it's stronger than the earth's negative charge okay it's not defying gravity it's just defying electromagnetism right yeah we can take a a, a metal plate and um we can hold it we can put it over the earth and use a van der graaff generator and it will anything that we put underneath it will go up into it as soon as that negative charge becomes stronger than the earth's negative charge right it, it's hard, kind of hard to see here so we got a van der graaff generator right here it's hooked up to this metal plate and um we'll, and that thing will zoom in and what things underneath it we have metal filings we have wood chips we have pieces of paper they all go up as soon as that negative charge gets stronger than the earth's negative charge so I'm not defying gravity. I'm just defying the negative charge of the Earth. Yeah, as are. I mean, I mean, gravity is a weak force, so you can easily um, overcome it. Overcome um, it with what? With more gravity or with a negative charge? Why is this a negative charge? How does gravity hold a, a trillions of pounds of oceans, trillions of tons? <laughs> of ocean and upside down cruise ships on the bottom side of a ball, but I could jump and walk and a bird can fly and a butterfly can fly. None of that makes any sense when you think about it. It's just, they admit that gravity is a theory. Do you know about the three body problem? Let me teach you, they don't teach you this in school. So the sun is a ball of gas in a vacuum. Impossible, but let's just assume it exists. And it has those gravity and it's holding on to the earth and the earth is going around the sun perfectly, right? <clears throat> the, the, the earth, its gravity isn't as strong as the sun, but it's able to hold on to the moon and the moon is going around the earth, okay? Why, yeah. when the moon gets in between the sun and the earth, does the sun's gravity not yank the moon away, or at least tug it a little bit. The sun is holding on to other planets that are farther and farther and farther away. They're all falling around it, but somehow those planets gravity are holding on to their own moons and the sun's gravity also ignores those moons. And then when we had that planetary alignment last year in December, all the planets were lined up. How come all of that gravity didn't tug on other things gravity? So here's the three body problem. You can take the world's best supercomputer and create a program and put a, a all right, I got a sun ball, it's this big, it's got this much gravity and I've got a, a planet ball and it's a smaller, it's got this much gravity and you put it in orbit 
and the computer will predict where it's going to be for the next thousand years. Doesn't matter. It works perfectly like a perfect timepiece. Okay. Then you add one more body, a moon or another planet into that system, and the entire system falls apart. The computer can't figure out what's going to happen next, and it never repeats itself. But in our solar system alone, there's 60 or 80 objects, you know, moons and planets, and they work like a perfect clock. Eclipses repeat every 18 years. The, 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 the stars reset every year. Nothing ever tugs on something else. So what does the sun have? Magical planet gravity and the planets have magical moon gravity. Can you explain that? Uh, I'm not a scientist, but I believe, I, I believe why um, if all the, uh, the planets in the solar system were like stationary and not uh, were rotating, yes, the sun would pull them in uh, and destroy them, but because they're moving around um, and yeah, it, it, it is at relative slow speed, it, it is enough to um, to have, um, the earth has a bit a better grip on the moon uh, than the sun has because it's moving around the earth and the earth is uh, yeah. moving around. How come sun. a supercomputer can't model that? Because it's nonsense. Um, it, it, listen, that isn't just, Sit down and think about what you're talking about there. That is indoctrinated, unprovable pseudoscience nonsense. Nonsense, you're saying. It's nonsense. Are you sure? Are it, you because, sure? because if that was true, they would be able to model it, but they can't, right? And and the, the gravity of the sun holding onto the earth, it's also holding onto Pluto, which is way out there, and Saturn, which is way out there, but it doesn't affect the moon. Come on, man. This is what you've been indoctrinated to believe. Pseudoscience nonsense, unprovable, unverifiable nonsense. That's your belief of the that's your belief of the globe. Here's the problem, man. You got some thinking to do. This world is not what they told you it is. And you, it's a good thing because you are a more powerful being than than you've been led to believe. So I mean, if one one day, if one day the uh, it turns out the Earth is flat, I give you a one Bitcoin. I don't want your Bitcoin. The Earth is flat. <laughs> Trust me, you don't have a Bitcoin to give me. The, the Earth is flat. What? Well, good. Do you have another reason? Do do you, do you use the Aristophanes argument at all? Um. Um. It's actually been a really long time since I've. Actually Aristophanes, have, the uh, guy with fixed. sticks in the shadows and the Greek yeah, yeah, philosopher. Of course, yeah, yeah, you could repeat it. <clears throat> that doesn't uh, prove anything. Here's Aristophanes, no shadow. He's got a shadow. He did some math, good, very good math. The math is accurate. And he predicted the shape, the size of the, the so-called earth uh, within 2%. Exactly. Carl Sagan pushed that out, everything <clears throat> in uh, Cosmos. And um, it's been pushed in every textbook. Um, but the funny thing is, uh, he's a super famous philosopher, um, uh, astron uh, mathematician, and he didn't show up in any books until the late 1900s. Fascinating, right? The first time, the oldest book we can find is in the late 1900s, 1900s. But it doesn't matter anyway, because here it is on a flat earth, no shadow, small local sun, same thing, use the same math, which is great math, and it'll tell you the sphericity of this flat surface. We don't live on a math equation. You can't assume that sunlight comes in parallel when you've never seen sunlight come in parallel. No one's ever seen it come in parallel, but we're told it's parallel because the sun is so far away. No one's ever seen it. Pseudoscience nonsense. Um, but okay, I have just one uh, final question. So if you're saying it's um, it's a small local sun, right? On, on a plane here, yeah. Um, if we were to observe this, the sun, wouldn't the sun um, like become bigger and smaller when it moves away from us? Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, we, I mean, we clearly don't see it when- the, Well, because, uh, because uh, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. And in my app, you could say, where does the sun go? And it shows you, but depending on where you are, Here's a, a, a high plains in, uh, in Africa, super clear, super dry day. The sun stops going down. It went over and then it stops. This is sped up with a super fast and it just goes away. It's not going down. It's going away. 
and it's shrinking because it's going away. So um, here's a here's a shot that I did, and uh, oh no, not that one. Where is it? It's um, where is it? Here we go. So I put a drone up on a super clear day, and the drone's filming the sun. And in five minutes' time, it went from up here, it went down, down, down. And if the Earth was spinning, it would just keep on going, right? But it didn't. Yeah, I saw in, the clip. Yeah. In five minutes' time, it went to here, and then it stopped, and it just sat there. And it, then it just faded away. It just went and it couldn't push through the atmosphere. I'm like, so, okay, how does that work? And the way it works is we see within what we call a personal atmospheric dome. So here's a glass dome and I got a light that's just going across it. And so inside the dome, we see this perfectly round sun. It's rising, it's setting, and then it gets down to the bottom of the dome and it doesn't go below it, it just stops. And it sits there and it fades out. We can, re we can recreate the same things that we see with experiments here. And that's how we see. And it just stops and it fades out. That's it. Because, because of the way we see in this personal atmospheric dome and because the sun is far away, um, we don't notice much of a size, but the problem is looking at the sun is very difficult. And if you use a solar filter, it cuts out the very most important part. When the sun gets down low, because it's moving far away, it gets weaker and a solar filter, you can't see the last part. That's the most important part. That's why they're always screaming, use a solar filter, use a solar filter, right? Because when it gets farther away, when the, the part the part where it stops going down, a solar filter just blocks it out and you can't see it. This is over Bulgaria. The sun is just clearly going away. It just goes away. But um, when you're when, when you're watching it over, you know, over water where there's clouds and stuff, the sun um looks like it's going down but these are clouds that I, that I put these in here um, and the sun is it looks like it's setting here now it looks like it's setting here but this one's merged with the horizon and it just goes beyond it okay and uh, and and there's plenty of them where we actually measure the sun and it does get smaller sometimes it gets bigger sometimes it gets smaller it has to do with the atmospheric magnification it has to work with the with the way your eyes work. When you see the moon rise, and it's gigantic, right? You see a gigantic full moon rise, right? Turn around, spread your legs, bend over, look at the moon through your legs backwards, upside down, and it won't be big anymore. It's how your mind works, and that disconnects it, making it look big. That sounds crazy. Try it. Yeah, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll try it. I'll yeah, try it. Try it. It's how it's all about perspective and the way we see. Um, again, in the app underneath the "Where does the sun go?" or sun, you know, "Sunsets," uh, there's tons of videos that show you and explain what you're actually seeing. Crazy. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, okay. One, one more thing. Um, sure. So, F. Uh, okay, if if the um, the world order is is trying to suppress us and uh, and uh, say the, uh, the the real world is a globe when it's really flat um, and all people uh, who work in government in astronomy biology math uh, and so on and so forth um, that would that would make quite a lot of people like they're not all in on it if not if not of they're not all in on it. People that work in biology, no, I mean, I don't know why you mentioned all those things. Um, all pilots, they're not in on it. Lots of them know, all the Qantas pilots talk about it openly in their lounges, but they can't talk about it publicly because they don't want to lose their jobs, right? Scientists, most of the, lots of them don't know, but what scientists, how many scientists are there? We know Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, Bill Lye, the lying guy with the bow tie, and then Brian Cox, who we call lying box, they just put out pseudoscience and, and straw man arguments and, and nonsense. They're like, hey, if the earth was flat, an eclipse would look like this, right? That's not, that's not what anybody believes, right? Eclipses are a completely different explanation of what they're telling us.
You know, a, a lunar eclipse is not caused by the shadow of the earth. And we can prove that, right? But these people aren't in on it, but there's plenty of people that know now. And there are more and more of them are coming out, bigger and bigger people. There's many big celebrities that know, but they don't want, they don't want to lose their careers, right? But they're talking to us on the sides. They're like, keep going, keep pushing, because they want this to come out. And at one point, it's going to get big enough where some big people will step out and there will be a, man, a huge flip. And I think they're trying to stop that. They're literally trying to shut us down before this gets out. Because if this gets out, their reign of power is gone. And they don't want that. They've had it for hundreds of years. Okay. Well, fair enough. Um, thank you so much, uh, David. It was really, really useful. Um, All right, man. You have, um, it will be a really great um, paper. Thank you so much. Um, We'll just stop the recording.